Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Uh, we're back with community building reflections from Surah Al-Hajurat. As a refresher, in the first two sessions, in the first one we covered the importance of having marji'iyya, or having a reference point for what it is that we're doing in the first place. So when we're building community around uh, Muslims and Muslim community building, then we're talking about um, building it around Allah and the Prophet wasallam. So the first verse of the surah tells us that لا تقدموا بين يدي الله ورسوله Don't put anything in front of Allah and His Messenger wasallam. So that was our first principle. Our second principle is the importance of adab, or it was the importance of adab. And we talked about that specifically in relation to not only with one another, but with the Prophet wasallam, and how adab is actually central to everything that we're doing. And it's not just a matter that's on the side, it can actually mean the loss of all of our good deeds. And so that brings us now to our third lesson as we follow the kind of the order of the verses in the surah. And in the surah next, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is, uh, بِسْمِ so in this verse Allah says, Those who call out to you from outside of the rooms, uh, most of them they don't understand what they're doing. And if they were to be patient until you came out to them, then that would have better, been better for them. And Allah is forgiving and merciful. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what's going on here? And how is it different than what happened in the previous session? So the story is, or, or the idea here, is first of all we have to know this is the verse that comes, that the the naming of the surah comes from, right? Uh, and hujurat, and hujurat are the rooms of the Prophet them because this was his home. His home was essentially a room. It wasn't like some big palace with a bunch of things or whatever. It's the masjid. Attached to the masjid are a set of rooms, like studios. But even smaller probably than maybe like a New York studio or something. So he has these studios, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And these people who are kind of like a Bedouin people who come from uh, outside of the city, they don't have the same kind of mannerisms as the people who are in the city. And the people who are with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on a daily basis, they know how to interact with him. They know how to speak to him. They know how to deal with him. They know what to say, how to say it, so on and so forth. But the people who come from outside, they're not really the same. So the Prophet them is dealing oftentimes with the Bedouins. Uh, when he's dealing with them, he's dealing with the people who are usually a little bit rougher, a little bit harsher, kind of more to the point. And, uh, you know, that's the environment that they come from. And so the Prophet them, what's the story that's happening here is that Allah is telling him that uh, those who call out to you from outside the rooms, uh, they don't really understand what they're doing. Okay. They don't most of them they don't understand what they're doing. So what is happening? What's happening is again you have the masjid. You have these rooms that are attached to the masjid. And the rooms, of course, one side is attached to the masjid, the other side goes to the outside. And Medina is not a big place. Everyone knows the masjid is here. They know the Prophet them, lives in these rooms with his wives. So what would happen is that some of the uh, Bedouin people they would come from outside the city, and it'd be maybe late at night, uh, maybe the Prophet saw them resting, whatever else it might be, he's in, he's in his rooms, and uh, instead of waiting until the Prophet them comes, they would come outside of these these rooms, and they would start to call to him. So, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, by his first name, they just yell him out like that. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa And uh, so it was very harsh, it's very kind of rude, um, not really the best way of dealing with the Prophet them or anyone for that matter. And uh, but the but what is Allah saying? Most of them they don't understand what they're doing. They don't realize. They don't have conceptualization of what's happening. And we're going to come back to this point. Then Allah in the next verse he says, and if they had been patient until you came out, it would have been better for them. And Allah is forgiving and merciful. So now we have two scenarios. In the last video we talked about the first scenario. The first scenario is Sayyidina Abu Bakr, Sayyidina Umar, radiallahu anhumah, the greatest of the companions of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are having a debate 
uh, or a conversation in front of the Prophet and their voices raise to the point that they can't even hear the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam. And Allah mentions this and he says that uh, maybe your deeds are going to be completely wiped out and you don't even realize it if you persist in this behavior, right? In the other case, now we have these uh, people who are coming doing something that's uh, ostensibly much worse Right? They're coming and they're yelling to the Prophet and them, basically demanding him to come out and uh, disturbing his family, disturbing this home, so on and so forth. But Allah now in the case of these people says that most of them they don't understand. And uh, and if they waited it would have been better. It's not it's very soft, right? If they waited it would have been better. And um, you know, if um, and Allah is forgiving and merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the, the main community building lesson that we take from this is that every situation and every people have to be dealt with hikmah. They have to be dealt with hikmah, with wisdom. Some people will look at this and they will say that this is hypocrisy. You know, why are you dealing with these people that way? You're dealing with that people this way. And it shouldn't be that way. Everyone should just be dealt with equally. No, actually, if you deal with everyone equally, you've dealt with them unjustly. Because not everyone is the same. People have different backgrounds, they have different experiences, they have different languages, they have different um, situations, they have all kinds of different things. So you don't actually deal with everyone equally. To deal with everyone equally would be a problem. And it reminds me of kind of like this image that goes around sometimes about the difference between equality and equity. And there's a fence and there's a game that's on the other side of the fence. And they have three kids that are of different heights. And it says equality and each of them is standing on the same height box. So one of them is able to see, and the other one is not able to see, and one of them is not even close, or you know, something along these lines. And then it shows equity. Same three kids, three boxes, but the boxes are all different heights, such that they're all looking over the fence at the same level. Okay? So what is it? Is that not each not every one of those kids we deal with in the same way. Not every person we deal with the same way in community settings. Some people they really should know better. Some people they really shouldn't. I mean that we can't expect them to know better. Maybe someone for example, um, someone's a board member, there's a higher standard. Someone is the imam, they're the religious leader, they're a teacher, they're giving advice, they're leading the salat, whatever else it might be, there's a higher standard. You, you know, you dealt with it in a different way. Someone comes in and they're not a Muslim. They don't know how to engage with the space. They don't know how to engage with the space. You don't, it's not like, oh my God, you know, sometimes you hear stories about these things, even police officers or first responders or regardless, you know, leaving out the exception for a serious situation. But someone might come in, for example, they might come into the musalla with shoes on. They don't realize it. They didn't know. Nobody told them. They didn't know. They walked in the musalla with shoes on. So do we just go crazy and lose our minds because like, oh my God, this person walked in the musalla with shoes on. It's the end of the world and so on. I mean, probably they don't even have an ajasa on their shoe in the first place. But the, you know, do we just lose our minds? Probably not. If someone comes into the musalla and they know, and they're a Muslim, and they're intentionally coming into the musalla with their shoes on, are we going to respond the same? Of course not. Maybe someone in the community has some sort of uh, disability. You know, they maybe they they don't realize what's happening, and they walk in with the shoes on. It's, it's different. A child comes in, adult is different. These are all different scenarios. Okay, so each situation gets dealt with accordingly, because each situation is different. So now, when uh, the Prophet sallallahu them is is having these different situations, and Allah is responding to them differently. Give me this. Okay, if you're going to lead a community, there has to be hikmah. These ones, they need, they know better. We have to deal with it a little bit more uh, strongly. These people, they don't know any better. And this is from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, uh, "Sayyida Aisha radhiyallahu anha." She said, "Umirna an nunazil al nasa manazilahum," that we were commanded to basically deal with people according to their level, according to who they are. Again, some people say this is not fair. Actually, this is fair. And it's a recognition that some people maybe have different levels of understanding. They might have different levels of knowledge. Some people also might have different levels of influence. So, you know, I have to deal with that accordingly. Without uh, ignoring someone else, without taking away someone else's rights, without oppressing someone else, of course, all of that. But, uh, but there's a difference here. And so these verses are really interesting because they're giving us that insight saying that, look, here's Abu Bakr and Omar, they, they did this thing, they might lose all of their deeds. And here's these Bedouin people who are coming to the home of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and yelling really loud and asking him to come out and so on. And then, for them, then, you know, it would have been better if they were patient. And Allah is forgiving and merciful. So we have to ask ourselves, 
You know, what kind of community are we going to be? Are we going to be a community that is forgiving? Are we going to be a community that is merciful? Are we going to be a community that understands these things? You know, sometimes I feel like we have um, almost like this disregard for understanding. Like we don't want to, you know. Just why are you making it complicated, brother? Just keep it all simple. Everybody is the same and all of the same rules apply. That's not the way it works. It's not. That's not our religion, actually. Our religion calls us to think. Our religion calls us to reflect. It calls us to understand. It calls us to have adab. It calls us to have hikmah, to have wisdom. Both of those require that I realize what the situation is. This is happening this time. That's happening that time. I'm not going to deal with them exactly the same. And so, you know, we have to uh, be patient as we deal with the people. And this is why education is also important, right? Like, just giving people reminders is one thing, but giving education is another thing. As we give education, we can expect more and more from a people because now we've gone over this before. And you should understand this. And these are the layers that we're putting forth so that we can build this community and we can take it in some sort of direction. This is also one of the reasons why kind of like established regular religious leadership is also important, right? Because the, the religious leadership is able to provide vision, provide insight, provide education, time, 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 so that people can grow and communities can grow and families can grow and children can grow and they don't, you know, they're not stuck in the same place all the time. And that's why the people who are in Medina are different than the people who are coming from the countryside. So this is the third major lesson from Surah Al-Hajarat on community building, that we deal with every situation according to that situation. And yeah, there's general principles and stuff, but the person who's going to serve the community, the person who's going to be in a position of leadership in the community, uh, general principles are not going to do everything. They have to learn to have some wisdom. They have to learn to have some wisdom and to be able to deal with situations as they come up. Allahu alam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.